Hello students, in this session, let us learn about requirements validation, management and monitoring. In the last two sessions related to chapter 2 of unit 2, we have learned about the requirements engineering process, which involves various steps. We have started with feasibility study, which tells you whether I can move forward with the development of the project. Then, once decided, we will move to the next step, which is called as requirements elicitation, where we will be talking about how to gather the requirements using various methods. Okay, those requirements should be very clear and very elaborate. Once the requirements elicitation is completed, the next step we have seen is requirements analysis, in which we are actually checking whether everything is properly uh, done or not. So, in requirements analysis, what happens is once all the requirements are finalized, they will be converted into system requirements, okay, which will be actually used by the developers and testers. And these system requirements will be documented into the SRS. So, that is called as requirements documentation. So, once the documentation is successfully done, now comes the next phase which is called as the requirements validation phase. So, what, what is happening in this requirements validation phase? Whatever requirements are actually documented, are they correct? Okay, are they meeting the customer needs or not? So, there will be a validation team which will be involving in checking the documentation and making sure that all requirements are properly documented and they are meeting the customer needs. Right? So, why is this useful? The first thing it is useful because it will be avoiding costly errors. So, in the initial stages only, you will be able to identify the error and you will be able to fix it properly so that we will not have any problem later during the development. Okay, the next one is aligning expectations. So, priorly only by checking all this documentation, we will make sure that whatever system we are trying to develop because we are actually validating the system requirements which are converted from the user requirements. So, we will make sure that the system requirements that we are collected or we have mentioned are actually meeting the customer's expectations. Okay. So, because of these two reasons, you have to perform the requirements validation. Now, how actually is this requirement validation performed? You have various methods. The first method you have is requirements review. So, you sit along with the stakeholders and you actually look into the document to find out if there are any errors or any missing details. This is called as requirements review. The second one you have is prototyping. Instead of reviewing, you actually build a very small prototype or a blueprint type of structure uh, related to your particular software and you will check whether it is meeting the expectations of the customer or not. This is called as prototyping method. The next one is test case generation. So, you actually prepare a test case sheet, okay, where you will be writing about if this is the input that I will be giving, this should be the output. Will I actually get this particular output or not? So, that is how you will be generating test cases. So, using these three methods, you can actually validate the requirements that you have documented, especially the system requirements that you have documented into your SRS. Right. So, once you finish validating and now the development of your product will start after validation, there comes the team which is called as the requirements management team. Now, these are the people who are involved in tracking the changes that we are making in the requirements. So generally, in many of the uh, methods that are used in uh, software development, the requirements are not fixed. Time to time, depending upon the customer needs, the requirements will be changing. So, the requirements management is actually responsible to keep track about what are the changes that are made in this particular requirements, right? Now, what this requirements management team will actually do? The first thing they will do is to keep track of the changes, okay? They, they make, they'll make sure that what were the original change uh, requirements, what are the change requirements. So, they'll keep track of this particular thing. Right? The second is impact analysis. If any new requirement is added into my SRS document, how is it affecting the other requirements or the system that I am developing? This is what is being analyzed by this team which is called as the requirements management team. The third you have is communication. The requirements management team is the one who is responsible to make sure that the changes that we make in the requirements are aware to every member who is involved in the development of the software. Okay, so they'll make sure that all the stakeholders are aware of the changes and they'll make sure that they're understanding why that change is being performed 
in that particular requirement. Okay, so these are the main activities that are performed by the requirements management team. Okay, the next one you have is requirements monitoring. Right, so requirements management is responsible to make sure that if there are any changes to keep track and to make sure that everybody is having idea about the changes that are made. But who is the one who will be actually monitoring whether all the requirements that are mentioned in the SRS are actually being developed. It is the duty of the requirements monitoring team. These are the people who will be keeping track about the progress of the requirements that are mentioned. Is the development team actually developing the requirements that are documented is being taken care by this requirements monitoring. Okay, so what is the purpose of monitoring? The first purpose is early detection of issues. So if, if you are missing any requirement, any important requirement, so immediately we will come across that and we will detect and we will try to resolve that issue. Keeps project on track. Okay, so a monitoring team will always make sure that the requirements are successfully being developed. We are not missing anything so that the project that we are developing is on a correct pace. Okay, now if you take an example of a scenario, like for example, uh, you have an order tracking feature that is being currently developed by your development team. Yeah, your monitoring team will now check whether that order tracking is actually being asked by the customer or not. If it is asked, is it actually documented or not? Is it missing? Okay, sometimes customer will ask but we will forget to document or sometimes the customer did not ask anything but still it is there in the document. These are the issues or the conflicts that are resolved by the monitoring team. It makes sure that whatever the development team is actually developing is there properly asked by the customer and is also documented. Right? So, these are the various steps that are involved in your requirements engineering process. The first one is feasibility study to make sure that uh, whether I can move forward with the development of the project. The second you have is requirements elicitation. If you have decided to move forward with the development, collect the correct and the exact all details of the requirements from the users. Third is requirements analysis. Find out whether I have collected everything properly. There are no gaps. There are no conflicts. If yes, convert all the requirements into system requirements and document it. Once the documentation is done, the next thing you have to do is requirements validation. So you will check whether everything is correctly documented or not because document is the one which is followed by the development team and the testing team. So you have to validate the documentation. Once validation is done, you will send that to the next level which is called as requirements management who are responsible to find out or to track what are the changes that are being done frequently in the requirements. They are the one who have to make sure that these changes are not affecting the system. They are the one who are also responsible to make sure that everybody is having the information about these changes. The last team that is involved is requirements monitoring who are actually responsible to keep an eye on the development team and the testing team to check whether if all the requirements that are documented are actually being developed properly or not. Okay, so this is all about your requirements engineering process uh, and the completion of your chapter 2 in your unit. Thank you.